One of the brand new features in both Hero and Hero Player 1.6v1 is the Hero Bridge panel. And whilst the connection requires a minimal amount of setup on your part, I've just put together this short video showing the steps you need to take. Now the steps are the same in Hero as they are in Hero Player, uh, but as Hero Player is our brand spanking new thing, uh, I'm going to be using that one to show you. So I'm going to load up Hero Player 1.6v1. Uh, we're going to come up here to Window and come down to Hero Nuke. Now this will bring up a brand new panel containing a couple of things. We've got a list of Nuke connections or connected Nuke instances at the top here. We've got a few buttons, a few checkboxes, and a couple of settings for the server or bridge itself. Now the thing that I'm going to introduce you to here is the install Nuke scripts button. Now this is going to do a few things in your .nuke directory, specifically in the init.py file, enabling Nuke to see some hero files and vice versa. Now before we do this, we need to make sure that Hero is pointing to the correct version of Nuke on our system. So I'm going to come up to Hero Player, come down to my Preferences, come to Nuke slash Export, and at the top of here we have my Nuke Path. So this is currently pointing to 6.3 v7, however recently I've just updated to the brand new Nuke 7.0, and I highly recommend you guys do that if you haven't already. So in here, instead of this 6.3, I'm going to put 7.0 v1. I'm going to do the same thing in here, so I am pointing to Nuke X 7.0 v1. Now when I do that, you can see that we've got this Nuke icon here, meaning it's a valid path, it's been found. And if I change it to something like v2, you can see the path doesn't exist, so we get no Nuke icon. So I'm going to drop that back to v1, come down and click OK. The next thing I want to do is come and click that Install Nuke Scripts button. Now it's pointing to the correct Nuke, I can click that button, and it will go off and install those scripts successfully for me. Now, although you don't really need to know this, I'm going to show you quickly what it's doing behind the scenes. So I'm going to go and open up my Finder, come down to my .nuke panel, and inside of here, we currently only have a menu.py. But there, just in the background, you can see it added an init.py and a hero underscore tools py for me. And these are the things that Nuke needs in order to connect successfully with Hero. But you can see, minimal amount of work. If we pop back to Hero Player, it says it's been successfully installed. I can click OK on that, and then click Launch Nuke. Now with that done, Hero Player is going to go away and launch a nuke that will be automatically connected to Hero Player for us using the settings that we have here in the panel. So if I grab the top of my nuke and just drag that down slightly, in the background here in Hero Player you can see in our nuke connections list we now have Untitled, which is the name of this nuke project, and its status, which is Connected. Now there is just one final thing we have to do in Nuke, and that's to come to the top Hero menu, which is brand new and has been stored by those scripts for us. Inside of there we have one option, which is Connection Settings. I'm going to click that. And then inside of here, what I want to do is make sure that every time I launch a Nuke, we always try and look for a Hero Player or Hero Connection. Now in this case, the Hero Path I have is Hero Player 1.6 v1, which was the Hero Player I clicked Install in. So that's been all set up for me. If I click Start Connection on Startup, it's always going to be looking for this specific instance of Hero. Now you notice that everything else has been connected or set up for me, so all I need to do is close this panel, close down Nuke, and you'll see that it disappears from our connections list, and we're now ready to go. Our round tripping review workflow is ready to be used. Now on top of the Hero Nuke bridge, we've also added in some brand new performance settings up here in the preferences. Now these settings are going to allow you to really customize the playback you get in both Hero and Hero Player 1.6 for your specific system, meaning you can potentially playback imagery much quicker than you could before. Now what you should set these to depends entirely on your system, and to be fair, often the defaults are fine, but let's get a little bit more technical here and look at some of the possibilities just in case you want to get really in depth with tweaking these settings. Now this first reader thread setting allows us to set the concurrent threads being dispatched to read ahead in the material and pull it into the cache. Now this defaults to 2, which is pretty good for single spinning platter drives, but for things like SSDs, if you can afford them, I find 4 does pretty well. Although going too high here can slow things down and cause thrashing, so do feel free to experiment a little. This next table allows the number of reader head threads to be set tailored specifically to particular formats. And generally I leave these alone really until I find particular formats that don't like what I've set above. Now these two settings govern threads allowed for libraries which schedule their own threading, in this case OpenEXR and ARRI. Zero is 
traditionally pretty good here, but you may want to tweak if you notice specific slowdowns associated with these formats, although of course, because they require debayering internally, they are by their very nature slower than things such as, let's say, DPX. Expand 3 to 4 is an important one as well, and depends heavily on your operating system, your graphics card, and potentially even the driver version too. So have a play with it, toggle it on and off, and see how it affects your system and playback. Uh, here on Mac, I find that it's generally best to be left on. Your playback cache size is an important one, governing how much RAM Heroes caching can use. So if your drives aren't CPU, aren't fast enough to support real-time decode of the footage you're attempting to play back, it'll only be able to play material back from the RAM. Now in this case, you want as large a RAM playback cache as you can handle, but making sure everything else can run on your system nice and smoothly concurrently. If your machine is fast enough to handle the material in question, all your RAM cache will be used for is to smooth out those inevitable bumps that happen. So in this case, a value closer to probably like 15% is pretty good. Now the last few settings here are OS dependent, and I pretty much leave them at the default unless asked to change them for troubleshooting purposes by our support here at the Foundry. So that was just a short video explaining how easy it is to set up the Hero Nuke bridge and how to optimize playback for your system in both Hero and Hero Player 1.6.